Hey everybody, this is Captain Kyle. I'm here with Chris Cicero of DieGeekdomCon. I know a lot of people out there are very curious about how to run a con. Maybe you want to do one yourself. Maybe you wonder just what goes into that. And that's why we're here. So Chris, you run the Die Geekdom Con. How yeah. many years have you been running it? Well, it's going on four, but we've done five cons. That makes no sense. We did one. We did one year. We did two, six months apart. Wow, that must have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of people out there they wonder about okay, how come it costs so much to go into a con? Mm -hmm. How hard could it be to make a con? Or when you made the decision to do a con? Yeah. Did you think it was going to be easy? No. You know, a lot of people think I just came out of, like, the clear blue sky doing it. Um, no, I, I, it took me a, a few years to sit down and think of, you know, ideas on how to make it, uh, you know, work. So people don't know much about me, like, outside of, but yeah, I do have a business degree. Yeah, I like cons. I like, you know, pop culture things. I mostly go to video game stuff. And, you know, I also like other kinds of events that aren't. People don't know that. I also like, you know, car shows and other things. I'm like... You know, I could do something like this. And I actually wrote down a bunch of ideas and a whole long list of things that were needed to go into do a like a, an event. So you decided to do this con, and a lot of mm -hmm. people think, okay, you decide you want to do a con. How hard could it be? Right. You just get some place to host right. it. You make a few phone calls. People show up. Right. Tell, tell me a little bit more about what goes oh, into it. Boy. Well, <laughs> well, like, you know, the one thing I hear is a lot of vendors, they just think, oh, well, I sit behind a table. And I see everything. Well, they mostly just see the people walking in front of them. They don't see the whole atmosphere. And they go, oh, but I know all these vendors and they'll all come to my event and it'll be great. But it's not just about the vendors. It's about the attendees and it's what they want. Then some people want to run it. They go based on what their interests are and what they like only. And you land up with a convention that is just things that they like and not what other people like. So not every aspect of my convention do I particularly take a large interest in. But, you know, one of the things I had to do is I had to learn a lot about it. So, you know, I have a friend who's also named Chris, who's not the Chris that you know, who's um, really big into board games. And um, he handles that room and he locks it down for me. And um, it's not something that he's open. He's opened my eyes to it, into the board game world. That's really cool that I didn't know about. But I had to learn more about it. And I would still play games with him and everything because I was like, you know, people want this. How does that all, what does it entail? I could just throw it into my event blindly, but I wanted to learn about what that portion of the, um, you know, pop culture community is interested in. So you're saying when you decide to do a con, you just can't base it on things that you like to do. Oh, I like video games and I like superheroes, but I don't care about the anime. Right. So I'm not gonna include that. I don't care about any science fiction stuff, you know, so I'm not gonna include that. So you have to basically, like many businesses, figure out what your customer wants. Correct. Well, I mean, it, it is. So some people, it takes away the magic when you stay it's a business, but it's like, you know, whether you're a nonprofit or, you know, or, or whatever you're doing it for, you know, it has to sustain itself. It can't be a party, you know, a party you do in a cheap venue with your friends. You don't have to worry about whatever. But with this, you know, you want the masses to come and it becomes a business, whether it's, you know, it has to at least break even to keep on continuing and to grow, it needs to make a profit. One, the person running the event has to understand that people want to have fun. That's what that's what you're selling. Your service is fun and entertainment and you have to keep it so. But even though you're not having the best of times doing it, the, the attendees have to have it. Wait a second, you're saying all the preparation you do, all the work ahead of time, day of the con, you can't just sit back, relax and let everything go smooth? No. No. Tell me about that. <laughs> a lot goes go, goes wrong because it is live. Everything's happening there. So you can plan always so, only so much, but what happens at the day happens at the day. So, I mean, the obvious thing everybody thinks about is, oh, it, you know, wild attendees or crazy attendees, bringing guns, dang stuff. And of course, that's always a problem. But, you know, volunteers can be an issue. They don't show up. You know, they... They don't show up, they don't do their job, they eat all the food, don't do anything. <laughs> I could go on with that. Um, you know, people don't show up with panels, I have to switch panels. People stay late with panels, which I know you have experience with that. Um, you get hit with so much stuff going on. And then, you know, I was in a banana costume at night and this one person comes to me saying, hey, so you're Chris. I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know information about getting our guests and everything. And I'm like, what? And so I get hit with all different things. And I'm like, I'm trying to have a good time at the moment. That's why I'm wearing a banana costume. People, it's an inside joke and people may not recognize me. It didn't work. But yeah. So you tried to disguise yourself as a banana. Because you always bring a banana to a party. <laughs> That's not what the joke <laughs> is, but 
But that's a good one too. That's my joke. I'm right. gonna go with that. Okay. Stuff goes on even before the con starts. So like, you know, we landed up with um, we landed up with the wrong tablecloths put on. Uh, we landed up with a dance floor on this stage before, like, hours before the convention started. Once we had landed up with um, one chair per table, so we had to double the chairs everywhere and um, all throughout the place. And uh, uh, we landed up with the stage was way too small that you could barely walk on that we had to set up so a lot of um a lot of things happen that always have to be adjusted and changed as you go so have you ever had a con where you showed up and everything was the way it should be no so what on the business side you're saying it's not a hobby it's not a party Correct. though it does have some aspects of party because you all have to have a good time what are some of the aspects that people don't realize go into the reason there's like a price tag at the door you're okay. not just letting people in for free if you want to talk about the money, you talk the first thing is the venue. You need your location. And like, I mean, you I mean, I've seen malls. I've seen them done in malls. I've seen them done outside. I've seen them done in senior centers. I've seen them done in crazy I've seen them done in flea bag hotels. I mean, I've seen them in all crazy places that that are just not conducive to a to, to a to to a convention. You have to find the most decent venue you can that is going to accommodate the needs. So like, you know the hotels I've used, their layout hasn't always been the best. But I, I wanted to make sure that there are at least decent hotels that people want to uh, stay at, or it's at least you know it's not it's not I'm not going to a dive, you know, and that's so a lot of the money goes right to the venue, like right off the bat. Now, what other elements? I don't I don't want to go into a lot of depth, but I know there's a lot more things other that people don't realize, or... other expenses, other things that you need to do that people are like, oh well, it should just sell itself, or who knew you needed that. Well, or those kind of things. Well, you know, it's not the field of dreams. It just doesn't build, you know, you just you just don't build it and they will come. You know what I mean? Like you, you have. So my logic with with marketing or advertising or anything is that people don't want what they don't know exists. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if they don't know my events happening by default, they're not coming. You know, it's like a lottery ticket. You know, I'm not into gambling or lottery, but you don't you automatically lose if you don't get that ticket. I'm all about telling everybody and I want to make sure when I tell them, I put my best foot forward that it's something that they want to come to and it's interesting and I want to give you no excuse not to come. Although people always, you know, there's always people, oh, I don't want to go because of this, that. They always will find a reason, but I don't want to actively give that reason to somebody. Well, what I find with people is if they want to do something, they'll find an excuse to do it. If they really don't want to do something, they'll find an right. excuse to not. But there's, a, but there's a lot of people who just sit in that middle. We're on the fence. Ton, more, most of the people are right in the middle. And you want most of those people to, 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 to come over here. What kind of expenses do people not even realize are, well, are involved? I mean, there's, I mean, the, the guests, depending on how you work, the guests, they, they cost you money of different aspects. Um, insurance, um, insurance. tables. What, what, what's the insurance for? It, event insurance for different things. You know, like whatever happens during the weekend, anything, you know, a bunch. You know, anything happens on the stage, anything happens with an attendee. Just so there's a lot more business type stuff that goes into running a con yeah but you've done it you said four years you've had five events so you must be rich right oh yeah i'm swimming in the money man <laughs> <laughs> i wish no i mean well part of the thing is all the for me all the money goes straight back into it it is doing better and when you get to know about the announcement you'll 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 get oh yeah like it is and so like you know the first couple of years we never got a guest we, we weren't comfortable with the money to make sure that we would, you know, cross that threshold. Once we did, yeah, we jumped into it and it worked. Well, people sometimes don't understand about these guests. It's not just, hey, sure, I'll come to your con. They require a guaranteed amount of money most times to actually oh. show up or a set fee. All different, yeah, and then, you know, flights, boat, rooms, things, stuff, and you negotiate with their agent as well, and sometimes they they want expensive flights or a lot of leg room, just random requests that they want, and you have to negotiate most of that out. And I understand that you have a big announcement about your con <laughs> that you will be releasing tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to finding out what that is. So you have a new con coming this, uh, later on this year, in 20, November, in November 2018. Yes. And what website can we go to find out more about it? We have www.thygeekdomcon.com. And a cat. And yes, we do have cats occasionally join us here on the show. You have this big announcement coming tomorrow, mm -hmm. so we're going to be looking forward to finding that out. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Chris, so much. It's yeah. been a pleasure getting a glimpse behind the scenes of uh, having an actual con and putting together this event. Right. And I hope that that informs some of you guys out there. If you were thinking about doing a con, maybe it has inspired you to not do a con, or maybe it has 
just giving you an idea, a push in the right direction. Mm. And even if you weren't thinking about doing a con, maybe now you... It's just interesting, you know? And yeah, you know some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and maybe you can thank him if you go to his con for all the hard work that he puts in. <laughs> so go to his site, thygeekdomcon.com. Uh, you also have a channel, so uh, right there. You can go to his channel, check it out. You can subscribe right there. And there's some other videos over here, including one that features his con. And uh, check those out. Everyone, thanks for watching. Have fun and cosplay on.